Morning, everybody. Just going through, trying to make sure everybody has recording access. So uh, I think we got everybody who's checked in so far. So it will be joining momentarily. What's up, guys and gals? There he is. All right, Coach. So we'll uh, we'll have Coach open things up here for us. Uh, obviously, the weather has affected things of late. Um, after that, we'll get to questions. We've got a little more time today, but still, we've got a lot of people on here. So I'll ask that you limit your questions to two to start, and then we'll circle back through. So if you just want to hit the little uh, raise your hand icon on your screens, uh, we'll roll through. But Coach, uh, I'll let you go ahead and kick things off here with the, the latest update on training camp. Yeah, what's up, guys? So, yeah, training camp, uh, you know, is going really well. Uh, our guys are uh, working hard. Um, uh, the tempo, the culture is starting to build. Guys are buying in. 
which is great. Um, obviously, we hit a little snafu so far this week with the weather. Um, we were supposed to have a, a scrimmage um, uh, with the league uh, to go over some of the broadcast stuff. We we're going to utilize that as kind of a game day procedure situation. We weren't able to do that. And uh, right now we're trying to make the most of the weather. So we've been in the hotel. We're maximizing our time with walkthroughs, meetings. Uh, we, we got regen and uh, uh, player activation, stretching. We're doing some some workout stuff in the hotel, some treadmill running, anything we can do to kind of condition these guys to uh, kind of keep their bodies going until we can get on the field. Hopefully we can get there tomorrow afternoon. It's just it's just cold. We're waiting for the temperatures to drop. So, you know, Friday may be the day where we finally get back on. But, uh, you know, we're just kind of pushing them mentally right now. And it's been good. Guys are good. Like I said, uh, they, they understand they're all being pros and we're just trying to make the best of our situation. Every other team's in the same boat. So there's no really advantage other than how they maximize their time. And we're trying to do that to the best of our abilities here to to get us going so that we can get back on the field when this weather breaks. Yeah, may have seen on social media. A few of our guys used the uh, the outdoor pools, the cold tub last night. So you can check that out at uh, Battle Hawks on Twitter. Uh, Greg Palermo from Spectrum, you've got the uh, first question today. Go ahead and kick it off. Thanks. Coach, uh, just uh, run us through what your uh, roster management uh, looks like between now and opening day. Um, I, I'm just I'm not up to date on like what kind of cut downs you're you're, you're dealing with. Um, and then um, secondly, uh, the, the local names, uh, a couple that would that would come to mind. Uh, Brian Hill, Allie Green, how are they doing? Yeah, so uh, we do have to make uh, cuts. We have 70 right now. All the teams do. We'll have to bring that down to 50 uh, at the end of next week. Um, so, you know, probably that Thursday, Friday, we'll make those cuts and then we'll build our roster and get rocking and rolling for that weekend, preparing for week one. Um, as far as uh, our St. Louis natives, uh, Brian's doing an excellent job. He's a consummate pro. Uh, he's a guy that does everything full speed. Um, he's an outstanding special teams player as well. So he brings a lot of variety and diversity to his game. Um, as far as his play is concerned, you know, he's a downhill runner, uh, one cut kind of a guy that that uh, hits the hole hard and, and, and he's very physical. So, you know, he brings a little more experience to that room. Um, you know, I, as far as using, utilizing him in a third down situation and, and maybe catching some of our, our balls in those, in those areas, you know, we, we probably by committee do that, but, uh, he's doing a great job. Uh, Allie has been dealing with a little bit of a shoulder issue. Um, he just more recently got on the field and, uh, been able to do a few things with us. Um, you know, so being with the weather this week, this was kind of a big week for him. Uh, it's going to be even bigger when we get out there and have our last, you know, five or so practices on the field. So, uh, you know, we, we love his length. He's a tall, long, long armed uh, defensive back. Um, again, we just got to see more of him, quite frankly, uh, with uh, with him on the field, Greg, to, to to get a better feel about where he kind of fits in, if he does fit in with our roster. All right, we'll move down the list. Uh, Andy Carroll, Scoops with Danny Mack. Go right ahead, Andy. Hey, Coach, thanks for doing this. Um, I know you mentioned before that you wanted to have an offense that could hit some explosive plays, some home run plays. Have you seen flashes of that in camp, and what does it look like? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I really like our skilled players, guys, our receivers. I mean, we're going to have to make some tough decisions. Um, these guys uh, have some NFL experience. Uh, they're young. We have... I mean, we got guys that are six four, six three, six five and a half, and they can all run, man. And then we have those slot bodies that can play inside. Uh, you know, when you look at guys like Marcel Aitman and Darius Shepard, they probably lead the charge right now. Uh, again, some NFL experience, so they know how what it's like to be a pro. Uh, excellent route runners. You know, Marcel's a little more of a contested guy. He's not going to get a ton of separation but he knows how to run routes. He's got great technique. Uh, and then you look at uh, Marcel, he's just super smooth. I feel like every time Mar uh, excuse me, Darius Shepard runs a route, uh, he's open. You know, he, he understands leverages, spacing, 
And uh, he's a guy that when you get him the ball, he's going to have some uh, some space to run because he's a very good route runner. Uh, and then we have a lot of other guys, you know, that are just, you know, they, they have some good, uh, you know, kind of intangibles that they bring to the table. And again, we're, we're trying to maximize these last practices to really narrow it down. So when you got to make tough decisions at the skill position, that's always good when you're talking about what you're trying to build from a passing game. So uh, and the tight ends as well. Tight end room is very deep. Obviously, I take a little bit more pride on what that should look like and who they should be. And uh, right now we got a good battle going on there. So we'll be a very big, uh, diverse uh, uh, group of skilled players uh, from a passing game standpoint. And we'll be able to mix and match and create matchups with our with our size from, you know, from right to left and any given week. So we're excited about that. How does Dante die look in camp? Dante's uh, been great. You know, he's got a tremendous amount of speed. Uh, you know, Dante's a guy that's kind of not been on the field for for a little bit. So we're just trying to, you know, get him back to the feel the feel of the game as far as just route depths and 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 just being smooth on on everything that he's doing. But man, he's got tremendous burst. You know, one of our fastest receivers. Um, you know, he's put in uh, the work and and with the competition every day, these guys have to come out and compete, and he's done that. So. Uh, again, we got some tough calls to make, but Dante's shown up every day and he's done a really good job. And, uh, you know, whatever that number is, whether we keep six or seven, you know, we we, we like nine or ten of these guys. So uh, uh, he's one of those guys who really like and, and we'll see where it plays out for him. All right. Pat Rafino, XFL News Hub. Go right ahead, brother. Good morning, Coach. Thanks for doing this once again. Yeah, Pat. Um, big question coming into camp for me was the center position. Obviously, you guys drafted John Toth, NFL experience, XFL experience. It appeared that he was on the reserve list to start off. And one, did he come to camp? And then two, how have you guys been mitigating his uh, possible departure? Yeah, well, honestly, I'm really excited about our center position. You know, we we uh, brought in uh, a former defensive lineman, converted now to center Mike uh, Panashuk. Played at Michigan State. Uh, he has been a subtle surprise. Uh, very physical. I can't remember the last time he's lost a one-on-one -on -one pass protection uh, drill with us competition-wise. Uh, I really think every day he's continuing to understand the points, the the backers, the blitz packages that are being brought to him so that you know him and the quarterback are on the same page. So I'll be quite honest with you guys. I'm excited about what Mike brings to the table. I think he's going to be one of those – uh, surprise players uh, in the league, and and we would like what he's doing. Uh, the other guy we have at center is um, uh, Christian Olmstead. He uh, he's doing a good job as well. You know, small school guy got a ton of starts in college. You just got to understand, get a better understanding of what we're doing. Super smart, you know. Former, you know, he's a chemist major, so you know he's just sometimes the smart guys overthink things quite a bit. So. You know, he's just uh, getting his bearings, but uh, very physical, getting better every day. You know, we may have had some question marks with him early on, but I think he's slowly growing on us, which is nice because we're going to need depth there. And, you know, we brought in Dallas Warmack uh, as well, who's a guard that can play that position. And then, of course, Steven Gonzalez can also slide over there in an emergency situation uh, as well. So, you know, look, we're always looking to see what's out there, but you know, it's very thin when you're talking about players that are on the streets. But right now, you know, Mike has been a very good, uh, uh, very nice, solid player for us so far. And he continues to improve and, and excite our staff. All right. Joe Lyons, St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Go right ahead, buddy. Hey, Coach. How are you? Um, you mentioned a little bit about Darius. Can you tell me a little bit more about him, what, what you see from him? And obviously, the NFL experience he's had, what does that mean? Yeah, he's a pro. Doesn't say much, man. He just goes out there and leads by example. Uh, you know, ask him to break down, uh, break down our practice one day. And honestly, I don't know if anybody even heard him. You know, he just kind of put his <laughs> hand in. But he's a pro, man. He knows what to do. He's very fluent with this with this offense. OK, you know, like I told you guys, this is a, you know, uh, a collaboration of kind of McVay, Gruden, LaFleur. So he knows the system. So him and Marcel come in and, and they are very familiar with terminologies. And that is huge when you're talking about a quarterback that knows the terminology as well and counting on those guys to be where they need to be. 
Uh, Darius, uh, he's got really good speed. He'll, he'll be in the mix as one of our return guys as well. Super accountable, great hands. I don't think I've seen him drop one ball the entire camp. And again, a premium route runner, very smooth. Probably doesn't look very fast when he's running, but he gets where he needs to be. And when he catches the ball or needs to run by a defensive back, he does. So I'm excited about him, man. I just, you talk about the experience of guys that know what to do, still young and passionate, got fire. You know, those are, you know, he's a guy to me that is really pushing the envelope of being an NFL uh, player. I mean, he should be there. He's a guy that just to me is accountable, uh, very technically driven. And uh, I mean, we're just lucky to have him, quite frankly. And, uh, you know, he's done a great job for us. Thank you. Yep. All right. Any other questions? Again, if you want to just uh, raise your hand, we got a lot of people on here. Uh, if anybody's got one for coach, just give a little nod. And I'll be happy. If you want to circle back now, we can do that too. If you want to follow up or a new topic, go right ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Greg. I, so, um, and I don't expect you to, to tip your hand uh, at this point, but um, for, for folks in St. Louis um, who um, are obviously excited about uh, you guys coming back, does the fact that you get a little extra time to build in for that home opener, um, should, should people kind of expect raised stakes when it comes to kind of, you know, is the rock going to show up at the dome? Uh, can you give us any kind of a, a hint as to, to what the league is planning for, for that home opener? Well, we, you know, we got to do our job and win some games, right? So I know there's a lot of buzz and excitement. It'd be nice if we were 3-0. and uh, That place may be even rocking at the highest level. The top may come off. But, yeah, listen, I, I think it's all predicated on how we start our season. You know, one game at a time, we're going to try to go out there and win each and every one of these games. So when we do get it home, we understand that, you know, how that advantage can be for us. Um, you know, I don't know what the league's got set. I'd be, I'd be quite frank with it. I would be there if I were them. I, I think, you know, it's going to be a great example of the standard of what this league is and what it's about. Uh, every day I get updates from Bry and the ticket department on how things are going, and they're trying to figure out ways to accommodate more and more every time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if the, the league will try to do something, I, you know, uh, Brandon Williams is doing a great job uh, as far as setting things up, you know, to make sure we put on a great show. And then uh, we got to do our part as coaches and players to, you know, get some buzz around our team with W's. So we're trying to win them all. We want to be undefeated coming into home, man. If we are, I think that can just set the table on what the XFL really is all about and really what the St. Louis atmosphere is all about. Thanks. Pat. Coach, obviously bringing A.J. McCarron, one of the most experienced players in the league, if not the most experienced, how's his leadership been throughout camp? Through the roof. I mean, he's another coach on the field. Uh, he's completely bought in, you know, a guy that just turned, you know, in his early 30s, uh, got a lot of tread on his tires. But the buy-in at the level he's bought in has been extremely impressive. Uh, you know, he's helping linemen, receivers, everybody, uh, you know, almost to the point where it's like, over over uh information from him but he brings a lot of that i mean that's what we need and he's helping our other quarterbacks as well you know, i really do believe we have three guys that if they had to go out there and play i feel okay about it and and that's i don't know if every team any team can say that so uh you know st louis had two good ones before one of them didn't get to play and they you know he went on the, to do good things in the nfl so you know again it's uh it's been a great competition but aj's uh you know experience um, you know, everything he's done, the intangible factors have been extraordinary. Now, you know, just like everybody else, you know, we got to make sure that translates on the field. And, uh, you know, I expect him to be great. And, you know, we're going to have some ups and downs, obviously early, but we're trying to minimize that by our preparation and, and what we're doing now so that we can get out clicking and, and feel good about what we're doing. So, uh, but yeah, he's, uh, he's been above and beyond uh, what we expected. But uh, again, it's, it's been great to see. All right, Joe Lyons, you're you unmuted. Do you got another question, or are you good up there, buddy? No, I'm good. All right, anybody else? Jake from Heartland, you got anything? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. We got you. All right, so uh, you'd mentioned earlier you've got uh, the uh, uh, cut, ups, uh, you know, to get things down to 50 players. Uh, has the uh, league front office... Uh, 
uh, stated anything or given any guidance of what's mm -hmm. going to happen to these players? Or do they just become part of a pool? Uh, are they potentially in a Team 9 scenario similar to 2020 where if things uh, go foul and you'll, you know, team players go down due to injury, um, mm -hmm. you know, do you have those people to pull from or they do they just become uh, free agents altogether for, to where even the USFL can uh, snatch these players? Yeah, so I, I can answer a few of that. And then maybe uh, uh, Brian knows a little bit more on some other partnerships we have. But uh, yeah, these the players will be waived. Uh, clearly, you know, when we need players to come back because of injuries to certain positions, we'll look to those guys first. But they are open uh, through waivers for other teams to pluck. Um, if they don't get plucked, then, you know, their option is to go back home, train, stay in shape, be ready to go. If things happen. Things will happen uh, for every team at every position so that that's something they can lean on. And then, you know, don't quote me on this. Brian may know, but I believe we have a partnership with the IFL. So whenever that starts up, players are going to be apt to be able to go there if they choose. Uh, to, if they want to do something football related, I don't know when their season starts. I think it correlates with us at some point during the season, but, um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. They'll go home. We'll get them back to their places. And again, they're just on call for, for us or the league. They'll be back in the pool and they can be plucked at any time, uh, deemed necessary for the situation. Yeah. Which was on point. We, uh, the league does have the partnership with the IFL and they will be, there is no team nine this year for the XFL. So. They will be free agents, but uh, obviously they have the chance to make the impression while they're here. Um, anybody else? Anybody good? Oh, Pat, you got another question? Go ahead. Yeah, Coach, I don't want to take up too much of the time, so final question. Coming from the AAF, you, know, you, Dave, and Donnie, what's the biggest difference in this third iteration of the XFL coming from your prior spring football experience about four years ago? Yeah, well, a couple of things. One, having the hub is great because everybody's on equal grounds as far as facilities, hotels. You know, when you go out to your own cities, uh, sometimes it's not equal. You know, we had portables for offices at the stadium and it was good what we had. But, you know, some some folks had they weren't even in their city. They had to stay in a different city and then just play the game there. So those things organizationally having the hub is a great idea, number one. And that's been great because it, it limits the. The, the, the teams of having something better than the others. Um, also, I think from a football standpoint, it should be as good or as equal. I thought the football was always good. The product on the field was always good. Uh, so that will be equal on both sides. The other part of it that, that makes a big difference is the business side. And uh, clearly, you know, that was a, 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 a dumpster fire for the AAF. But for here with the XFL, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. We just had a uh, uh, all player, staff, uh, kind of get-together event. Uh, Jerry Cardinal, uh, Dwayne Johnson, and Danny Garcia were there. They spoke to us all, their players. And you can hear the passion about how this, this venture is, is ultra important to them, you know, especially the money guy, Jerry. Uh, you know, this is a guy that's had a lot of success uh, throughout sports. Uh, he's got, you know, a ton of assets behind him. And, the way he speaks is almost as if this is, you know, a chip on his shoulder to make this thing take off and be and become something bigger than it already is. So that needs to be in place. And if it is that 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 will make it work. So uh, that that those are the two differences, you know, that I see that are vitally important that are uh, on, a, on a positive side for this league. But the football stuff, guys, I mean, it's going to be good. The product will be good. We got really good quarterbacks. We got good quarterbacks personally, so at least we know our product will be good. But, you know, again, it's it's going to take us some time. Who, what team can kind of put it together early enough, you know, when you're talking about building something from the ground up, having a month of practice, going through a week of freezing rain, can't do anything. You know, uh, the, the staffs and the, and the players that can manage that and handle that, that'll show up uh, week one. And for us, you know, the good thing about us, at least our practices, and I can't speak for other teams, We've had some live physical practices throughout the early part and into January where we got really good evaluation on what guys could do, where some guys and some teams were leaning on some of that stuff being done this week and the scrimmage stuff. Uh, so we feel good about, you know, the intensity uh, and what our defense can do. You know, can they tackle? 
we have film that we can pull up and feel good about. So, you know, mentally we can maybe advance ourselves during this time where maybe teams may not know what a few of their guys are going to be doing until week one. All right. Everybody good or any uh, last questions out there? Appreciate everybody jumping in this morning. All right. Very good coach. Thank you very much. Hey everybody guys. Stay warm you. up there. Thanks coach. All right. <laughs> thanks coach. You well guys. See you. All right. Hey, thanks Brian. Thanks, thank everybody. You. Tyler, if you have any uh, questions or need any follow-up stuff, I'll be happy to take care of you. So thank you guys again. Appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, bye-bye.